Today we are starting with the chapter on financial mathematics and we are going to revise the formulas that you've already used in grade 9 and 10. Interest on an investment or loan can be calculated in two different ways, either using simple interest or compound interest. And each one of these two methods have their own formula. Both these formulas consist of four variables. You will always receive information about three of these variables and the fourth one can then be determined using algebra. The first one of these four variables will be the p-value and the p-value is for the original or starting amount of the account. Then you have your a-value and the a-value is your final amount. This value then consists of your original or starting amount as well as the interest that has been added. I is your interest rate divided by 100. Your interest rate will always be given as a percentage and you will have to divide it by 100 to write it in its decimal form. Lastly, you have your N value and your N value is the number of periods. Up to now, your period was always given in terms of years, but in grade 11, we also have a look at different compounding periods. Let's start off with a basic example. Liam invests 5,000 Rand for six years. Determine the future value of his investment if the interest is calculated as follows, and then we have to do it for 12% simple interest per annum, as well as 12% compound interest per annum. When you are doing a financial maths question, it helps to highlight the important parts of information that was given. Firstly, they say that Liam invests 5,000 Rand, so that will be his starting value for the account. And this is invested for six years, which will be our number of periods. Here we are asked to determine the future value or the final amount for this account, which will be our A value. In A, we are given that it's 12%, so that will be our I. And then they also mention that it is simple interest. So that means that we will be working with the simple interest formula. In B, it is also 12%, but now compound interest. So our I is still 12%, but the compound interest means that we are now going to work with our compound interest formula. Now I can substitute into both of these formulas and then use a calculator to get the final answers. I'm reminding you that simple interest is calculated on the original or starting amount, but for compound interest, the interest is calculated on the previous year's final amount, which means interest is calculated on the starting amount plus the interest. And here we can see that difference because with simple interest, the amount is smaller than compound interest, because on simple interest, they only used the original 5,000 Rand when calculating the interest. Example 2. 6,000 Rand is invested for 4 years and grows to 7,000. Calculate the annual simple interest rate for A and the annual compound interest rate for B. So here an amount of 6,000 Rand was invested. So that is our starting value, our P value. And this amount is invested for four years, which will then be our number of periods. This amount grows to 7,000 Rand, which will then be our final amount. And we are asked to determine the interest rate. In A, it is specified to be a simple interest rate. So here we are going to use our simple interest formula. And when I now substitute into this formula, I need to solve I that is inside the bracket, and that can be done using algebra. And because I is on the inside of the bracket, I'm going to start by getting rid of the 6,000 on the outside of the bracket by dividing. On the right, I will then be left with only what was inside the bracket, which is 1 plus 4I. Next, the left-hand side can be simplified to 7 over 6. And on the right, I want to get rid of the 1, so I'm going to subtract 1 on the left. And finally, I need to get rid of the 4, so I'm going to take the 6th and divide it by 4, and that will give me a decimal value of 0, 0,041666. 
and this decimal value now needs to be multiplied by 100 to rewrite it in the actual interest rate percentage form. And once multiplied by 100, I will have 4,1666, which can be rounded to 4,17% per annum. In B, it is now compound interest. So I'm going to work with the formula where the N value is now in the exponent. Once again, I'm going to substitute. And again, I need to solve I that is inside the bracket. I'm going to start off with the same step, and that is to get rid of the 6,000 that is multiplied to the bracket. So I'm dividing by 6,000. In this case, the bracket is, however, still there because I still have to the power of 4 on the outside of the bracket. And to get rid of that to the power of 4, I'm going to add a fourth root on the left hand side, and then on the right hand side, I'm only left with what was inside the bracket. Finally, I need to subtract 1 on the left hand side and I'll be left with 0, 0,932. And this once again has to be rewritten as a percentage. So when I multiply by 100 and round to two decimals, I will have 3,93% per annum. So here we had a look at two examples of how the formulas for simple and compound interest can be used in calculations.